Well, it's turned out to be a yet another spectacular day for the Bulls with the Nifty now moving about the mark of 9,500. What's the way forward though? But before that, let's take a look at all the counters that have driven the Nifty upwards. Shraddha, with the intraday graph, which obviously looks like a very good one, at least when it comes to the Bulls. Absolutely, Agam. Uh, in fact, if you look at the intraday chart itself, the Nifty, uh, though while it was trading with minor gains in early trades, it, uh, it it continued to remain stable around that 9470 mark, after which it uh, gathered momentum and continued to trend upwards. And today's uh, rally was uh, led by large caps, it was PSU banks, auto and IT stocks, which are lending strong support. So, yes new uh, highs for uh, the nifty 9500 okay so uh, well given that uh, we are also in conversation with mr choklingam uh, uh, once again joining us uh, where do you see these levels going on at least as far as the nifty is concerned are you concerned about the valuations uh, certainly i'm not concerned about nifty or sensex which means uh, overall market i'm not worried but my worry keeps coming only on the mid cap and small cap space uh, because there is no valuation comfort in right. this uh, uh, space, particularly if you look at the results also, it is not that uh, you know the majority of the mid-cap companies have posted a strong double-digit growth in profit. Right. Still, many of them are struggling, and uh, even some of the mid-caps which lack liquidity, they have run up like uh, anything. So this is a time to be very, very cautious on the mid-cap and small-cap, and that is why I have been suggesting uh, continuously uh, having more tilt towards large-cap stock to the extent of even 60 to 70 percent of the equity portfolio. Right, so this is uh, another thing that we have been observing uh, re in recently. Uh, you know, everyone has been suggesting a tilt towards the large caps. But considering we are talking about the large caps, let's take a look at what's happening in the indices with respect to the futures and options space. Now, uh, when uh, it comes to the options market, we are looking at more writing in the 9,400 and the 9,500 puts. Then this was more or less in expected lines, considering the fact that we have moved above the mark of 9,000. But when it comes to writing in the cause, there's been hardly any action here, which leaves the market open for interpretation of whether or not we can see the Nifty move substantially above 9,500, 9,600. Let's take a look at the maximum open interest now. That remains with 9,300 put, which, will, which may signify a lower end, at least as far as the near term is concerned, on the Nifty. And on the upside, while Max OI remains with 9,500, we are looking at some more resistance building up in 9,600. That said, uh, Mr. Chokalangam, uh, once again coming to the banking space, uh, the, the PSU banks are still to catch up and we are looking at some changes in banking regulations as well. But what is your call on the banking space in general, especially the PSU banks? Yeah, PSU banks, two-thirds of them have already run up, you know, uh, from the bottom they have run up even under two, th three hundred percent. Now you have seen some of the results like PNB, you know, many other PSUs have come back, come out with the results. But if you look at them carefully, one, they are trading at a price to adjusted book value of over five times, right. uh, which is historically unprecedented. And two, uh, there is no drop in uh, net NPA outstanding. Right. Uh, you know, some of them are quoting even 6-7% uh, net NPA. So, it reminds the days of 2013. Right. So, therefore, the current prices are, uh, you know, pricing in, uh, you know, the kind of status of uh, asset quality these uh, PSU banks are facing. So, I do not find major opportunity, but I find opportunity in, uh, you know, private sector banks. Right. Uh, you know, particularly where the valuation is comfortable in terms of price to book uh, being around two times or less than two times. That is a space one has to choose the banking stocks. Okay, so while there have been um, positive surprises from private banks this quarter, it was Punjab National Bank that reported earnings today. Just want to give you um, uh, the basic numbers. Of course, uh, net profit missed analyst estimates, but uh, more importantly, gross NPA ratios improved quarter on quarter despite slippages which continue to remain elevated and that was mainly on account of healthy recoveries, some upgradations and sales to asset reconstruction companies. Again, something a higher sales to ARCs is something that uh, is a trend we have been noticing in all banking earnings so far so uh, if you talk about the PSU bank earnings so far it's been a mixed bag Dina Bank, Yuko, Syndicate, all of them continuing to uh, disappoint while Indian Bank and Punjab National Bank have uh, surprised as far as asset quality is concerned uh, and on the back of uh, 
PNB numbers, we saw strong support coming in from the PSU banks, uh, Bank of Baroda and SBI, both of which ended uh, with gains of uh, over 2.5%. Amongst the auto names, you also saw Hero Moto Corp and Maruti Suzuki also doing well. That apart, IT names were trading stronger. So whether you have your um, uh, TCS, uh, TCS, of course, uh, it will... Um, start with its buyback on 18th that's another reason we are also uh, probably seeing some reaction there and you had uh, HUL which you can't see here but again it ended about one and a half percent ahead of earnings uh, and before we go to Agam for that I also want to highlight the losers Kotak Mahindra Bank India Bulls Housing Finance some profit booking seen there while Hindalco uh, lost close to one percent so again metal stocks were seeing profit booking um, today but uh, coming back to you Mr. Chokalingam uh, what are your top last cap picks for now? Certainly I mean there are few uh, to name one I would suggest uh, HPCL okay. uh, you know the oil price has come down despite OPEC cartelization and I don't think the oil price is going to shoot up anywhere beyond 55 or uh, 60 dollar uh, even for next one to two years which is a big uh, positive trigger for uh, oil marketing companies like HPCL and second what is not highlighted much in the market is that HPCL according to me is also something like a FMCG company because automobile population is continuously growing which means offtake of fuel from the pump stations are growing in volume terms consistently so this stock will be a major beneficiary so therefore one should consider uh, HPCL. All right. Uh, uh, moving on to mid caps, of course, the broader market breadth continue to remain in favor of gainers. Agam. Yes, absolutely. A very positive market breadth. We're looking at three gainers for two losers. Let's take a look at some of these gainers. We have Avanti Feeds right at the top, which has gained as much as 12%. It's followed by Unitech now catching up. Of course, it's a penny stock now, but it's up also 12%. Sinjin International up 9.8%. JNK Bank, Adani Power. 3M India is the interesting one here, also up as much as 8%, with gains coming in on KC International, Granules India, and Minda Industries. So, so as you can see, there's substantial you know, momentum with respect to gainers. Let's take a look at some of the losers as well. Chennai Patriot Petroleum losing out, down as much as 5.3%. Shilpi Cable Technologies, yet another day, another down circuit. Asahi India Glass, Chambal Fertilizers, Ranko Simmons, and Rashtriya Chemicals seeing some amount of weakness but on the whole once again this day belongs to the bulls even when it comes to the broader markets so uh, we are looking at a favorable you know uh, market breadth but uh, once again mr choklangam uh, you know we spoke about vindya tele links last time we've seen earnings come about and you you're positive on that counter what are the other mid cap stocks that you like yeah uh, vindya tele i mean uh, came out with a very good results yesterday uh, you know the epc project uh, the segment has done very well uh, now, going forward, I would uh, suggest a South Indian bank. Okay. Uh, just as a disclosure, personally, I have invested and all my clients hold. And we continue to buy even at current prices. Okay. Uh, if you look at the results, it is marvelous in the sense, you know, price to adjusted book value is just 1.1. Right. And uh, net NP outstanding, whether you look at a percentage or a absolute amount, they have come down substantially, sequentially, right. which is very rare in the banking space. Now, this is a part of old private sector banks, more than eight decade old. Now it has crossed the business size of 1 lakh crore for the first time. Now the bank with the 1.12 uh, trillion rupees of business is available at a market cap of you know less than 5,000 crore. Right. So if you see the last 20 years history, a lot of old private sector banks have been acquired. Right. You know we had seen the Bank of Madura, Bank of Rajasthan, Vaishya Bank, Lord Krishna Bank. So many banks were acquired. So I believe that acquisition space would continue in this space and. You know, if that happens, this can be a multi-bagger. If it doesn't happen, still it can give 25% to 30% return from current level. So right. therefore, this is one stock which we have been recommending quite aggressively. Keep an eye on South Indian Bank to 25 to 30% from current levels. Of course, tomorrow is going to be another very big day for earnings. We're expecting numbers from HUL. Uh, while we can expect tepid growth in revenues, uh, it's, it's going to be a contraction in margins, especially on gross margins because of uh, the fact that we've seen raw material prices increase substantially. Bottom line, well, nothing to take home to, but we are expecting revenues growth. That's that's what the market's going to keep an eye on, about 4%, with about 2% volumes growth and about 2 25 odd percent in terms of the price hikes that we see. But on the whole, that is all that we have for today. Mr. Chokalingam, thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure speaking with you. As for you guys, do join us again tomorrow on Bloomberg Queen's Market Wrap. Till then, it's goodbye.